Aloha, I'm Mahina Florence here on the lovely North Shore of Oahu, and I have someone very special with me in the yard. You guys out there in Blendersville had questions, so we're here to answer them. Let's go. It's Nathan Florence. Um, AKA your husband. My lovely husband. Shouldn't you be at home uh, making a mess for me to clean up or posting cat videos? I did that this morning. <laughs> you both, did. Both of my chores are done for the day. <laughs> you made a massive mess. I've been cleaning all day. It's <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. Um, so it's great to follow you on Instagram and keep up with all your content, but the people want to hear the details from you. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. First question. You went on a bunch of trips this year, including a long stay in Europe. Did you have all these waves and spots planned out or was that supposed to be just a vacation with Mahina turned into an all time slab tour? Okay. So <laughs> some were planned out. Europe was a surf ship disguised as our late honeymoon. And I said, we'd be doing a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And I may have manipulated some of the locations where there happened to be swell at a certain time. <laughs> Let's just say he's like, I'm going to Fiji with my brothers. I'm going to go score so that we can go to Europe and I don't have to be stressed <laughs> to chase swells and find waves. The tell them the first stop we made. Nazare. Straight to Nazare. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the beautiful historic town of Nazare, babe? It's going to be a dream. Dream come true. You were hoping it was going to be absolutely yeah. bombing and it yeah. was absolutely flat for you. But yes, that we was had, game. We had a good time either way. So we jumped around a bunch of spots. Mm -hmm. What are all the spots we jumped around to? So we got to Portugal and our plan was to base in Portugal. And from there, because everything in Europe is so close, mm -hmm. we could jump around to each country. And that's kind of what we did. We had a big adventure up in Nazare, and then we were supposed to we were supposed to go to Lisbon for a few days, then Scotland. And then we had a situation on our hands where I pulled over to fill up the car with gas, mm -hmm. and there was two nozzles. One said gasolio, and one said gasolina. And I said that's diesel, and Mahina said no, it's not. The other one is diesel. The black one is diesel. And I said, no, it's not. I'm the boss. I run the show. And I put gasoline in our diesel car. And I had to live with that for two months the rest of the trip. <laughs> Pulled out, broke the car. <laughs> broke $500 the car. later. Uh, exchange. Yeah. Oh but God. because of that, we returned the car and yeah. we got to spend three days in Lisbon and see the whole city. So it was and ready. then after Lisbon, we went straight over to Scotland. Yes. Because? because we wanted to see the highlands of Scotland and I was dying to show you. Not because there happened to be a swell and a certain slab that was good the day we landed. <laughs> exactly, I love it. And then after Scotland, so we went to Scotland, we were together, we went back to Portugal, right? Yes. There was a specific wave that you were obsessed with in Portugal. The cave. The cave. The cave, and it quickly turned into a week straight of checking it three times a day and spending most of the day looking at it. But we had multiple lobster dinners for, I'm pretty sure, under $20. So it was a win-win. You nailed it. What are your top five waves of the entire trip? We're going to go Cave, mm -hmm. Scotland Slab, mm -hmm. Ireland Mulligmore. Give you my top three. Top three. Top okay, three. Okay, we'll take the top three. What was your board setup and what is the board situation? Because we're going to all these slabs that you don't even know you're surfing. We don't know yeah. how the swells are. How are you packing your bags? I mean, I know, but <laughs> let everyone yeah, know you how know. you're packing it, the bags. It was an absolute nightmare. I had mm -hmm. a coffin of seven, no, I had a coffin of five boards. And then I had a gun board bag mm -hmm. of two guns in it. So I'm traveling. You have two suitcases, I have a suitcase and two board bags. We have so much luggage and all of it is so heavy because mm -hmm. we had to bring so much gear for so long a time. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we definitely supported the airlines and their baggage fees that trip. But um, traveling around with the boards, I wanted my guns for Nazare and for Ireland. And I wanted my other boards, which I didn't bring really boards for 
I brought like one board for surfing small waves and shortboarding. Mm -hmm. The rest were all designed for slabs. So 6-0, pintail, epoxy is what I rode at almost every slab, every day at the cave, all the uh, Scottish slabs. And then once I got to Ireland, I rode my guns. First time I'd ever ridden, ridden it was at Mulligmore, and I rode my 6-2 at the other ones. Mm -hmm. And for the people that don't know, what was your, and it ended up being super fun, but you turned it into, like they said, an all-time slab tour. I think you watched it, the charts, equally as if not more than you would here in Hawaii. What was going down when we were in Europe? Yeah, the, it was kind of just bizarre. It happened the whole summer. Um, it happened in our Indonesia trip together. Okay. We showed up, we put time in, we spent two months in each of the locations, and somehow it was nonstop swell during the two months. Like ultra score fest every couple days was another 10 to 15 foot swell. Mm -hmm. That's what I have for you. <laughs> That's the end of that story. <laughs> I thought you were gonna You're looking go for more. On. Yeah, give us more. Um, <laughs> well, this one's for you. Have a name economy. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is good. This is good. Were you stoked or bummed to be my filmer for the trip? Because I didn't bring my filmer on this trip. Mm -hmm. I brought a handy cam and Mahina. I was actually really, really stoked because we were experiencing slabs and waves together for the mm -hmm. first time. And I think watching you push yourself and watching you be so stoked and happy and feel completed made me stoked. So I was happy and I love filming. Like I love being creative, being behind the camera. So I was stoked, I, I was stoked. It was cool for me because like, I just, I didn't want there to be any pressure for one you went beast mode on the filming, like holding a single position in the freezing cold, no movement, keeping me in camera frame no for camera. like three to four hour sessions, I'm talking. Like the other cameramen that were there filming other people were like, holy smokes, your filmer is gnarly. I was like, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a handy cam and you have a red camera. So <laughs> the best we're is winning. comparing the red camera clips with the handy camera clips. Yeah. And like obviously the quality of red is so much better, but like somehow, the Our sturdiness was so much it was better so good because to they would have it on the tripods and the wind would blow and it was yeah chaotic. and and like you said though it was cool because mahina felt included in my sessions you know like some of the sessions it was just me in the water i was surfing a dangerous wave alone yeah. and it was just her on land and so like the situation is intense because it's it's just it, just the everything's on me or on you yeah. and vice versa capturing it is all on you keeping myself safe is all on me. And if something happened, you would have to be the one to do it. So it was like these sketchy situations, but mm -hmm. when I would get a good wave, she's the only one in the world who saw it. And so yeah. we were sharing these like special moments like that because it would so be just true. us on a coastline somewhere in a some deserted place, just scoring. And you got to be a part of my sessions because you were capturing it all. Exactly. That's one thing I wanted to touch on the cold water weather. Like yeah. it, how did you transition from the hot Hawaii weather into the cold Ireland and Scotland temperatures. I got asked that a lot right. and they were like, oh, how uncomfortable are you? But I honestly was not uncomfortable. I loved it. I sleep better in colder weather. I love being cozy and, and I actually loved all the gear. That was another question was like all the extra excess gear on your body compared to just board shorts in Hawaii, a wetsuit and booties and gloves and the stiffness and all that, which it definitely was restrictive mm -hmm. and like, my um, agility was a little bit restricted, but you feel so protected. If you land on the f reef on your feet, your feet are fine, they're in booties. If you land on your back on the reef, mm -hmm. my wetsuit tore, not my skin. Like we had that we happen multiple that times. Happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had that happen at the cave and, and at these other slabs, you feel like you have a little padding on your body. So I didn't mind it at all. Yeah, you were thriving in the cold water. I was thriving sure. in the cold water. You were thriving in the cold water. Um, were there any rad local people that you met in any of the spots during the R tour? Yes, we. Some people we'd known before and new friends. Almost that was one of the coolest things about the entire summer of travels was all the new surfers we met, local crowds that shared information with us and and were just stoked to surf with us and the hospitality everywhere we went and we made these relationships with people that now moving on and future times we can hit them up and be like hey what do you think on this or do you want to surf together you have friends and some of these waves were so heavy in these locations where there's not many surfers that you're looking for a friend to surf with mm -hmm. so it was great to meet new people and and have someone like in Portugal we had and and Europe we had Tom Lowe 
hanging with yeah. us so much and he was just so open and friendly and knew the location because he's done so many years and pioneered a lot of the waves in Ireland and in Scotland and all that and so having him and his information at and he was so willing to share and we just scored sessions just me and him together Tori Meister and Zeke and the young Ben Log in Scotland and like you know you just meet these people and you surf just just them in a dangerous location yeah. and uh, you just bond with them so it was cool. And I forgot we're talking about the entire summer, not just that last bit. Can you tell us how many stops you made and how many waves you surfed? Did you do the calculations on that? I know we did nine countries uh -huh. and the waves were 20 plus like world class waves, is what I would say, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that it was heavy waves of consequence. There was 20 plus waves that we scored, I think, in one Met, what, like six month period, which is just insane. We'll share, will you share with them your goals? Like you set a specific goal, do you remember? I think you This year or that last year? This last year. Well, my goal was just to chase every single swell that came and to do certain countries be there during their peak seasons. Mm -hmm. And so that was what we did. We started in Australia. We did Tahiti, Indonesia, Mexico, Fiji, Ireland, Scotland, Portugal. Am I missing I, any? I don't the think United so. States. <laughs> the United States. Okay, so what is your favorite pair of blenders? We're gonna bring it back here. I have them on. My signature pair, of course. Custom, ocean floor mapping. <laughs> Otherwise known as Lightning Vision. Check them out. How did you come up with the name Lightning Vision? I was once struck by lightning. Oh, got it. When you married I, me. It, it. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good name. Your lightning's ever pounded. It. Oh! <laughs> he's on fire today. I quit. I'm done. <laughs> Was there any other name that you would have for your glasses other than the one that they went with? No, because I. it's just... I feel like it embodies the, my program. It's it's spastic and fast pace and all that. It matches that. your tattoo, like it, it matches me. my my <laughs> tattoo as well as my signature series with my fins and my boards and the whole deal. I have lightning bolts almost everywhere, and so it ties right in with all that. I'm gonna bring it back real quick to Europe. Okay. Best food in Europe and worst food in Europe. Okay, best food in Europe. I'm gonna go with, shoot, we ate a lot of good food. Gotta be lobsters. Yeah. We had insane lobsters <laughs> multiple <laughs> times and it was so cheap and that was in Portugal. But um, second best is maybe our filet fish stop, McDonald's, oh, European we McDonald's. Had the McDonald's. Oh man, they can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I told them they were mad. You were mad we went to McDonald's. I was so mad. We're that was here. on me. We're not eating McDonald's. Uh, but as far as bad food, I don't think we had bad food. We, we were good all the way. I mean, we were just stoked to be there. So anything was yeah. good to us. But you had just everything. We had this little soup and coffee boutique cafes in, oh, in Scotland. So and then those crazy seafood dishes and platters in Portugal. And so. We were definitely living it up. So what's our plan for this year? We plan fresh year. Is this year is to take all the information we gathered from that last travel, mm -hmm. replicate it, but do it better and hit more. Are we traveling with less boards this time? We're traveling with probably more boards. <laughs> more boards. So we got more boards. Getting there will be a nightmare, <laughs> but once we're there, we'll be okay. Oh my God, so good. Go to the next one. There's nothing else. Oh, that's it? done with you that was the that was the blanks well that's all we have for you <laughs> Shake thanks on for it. tuning in good deal found it <laughs>